Hi everybody, this will be part two of how to set up a cinematic in Unreal. The last video we came and created a level sequence uh, with two cameras that are moving, focusing on different areas of our level. Uh, we play with the camera cuts and set up a fade track as well. So basically what that looks like is we have a level sequence that will fade from black to visible. Uh, the first camera will animate. It'll fade to black as it changes the camera. The second camera will animate and it'll fade to black. All right. So a lot of other things we can add, we can literally add anything that is in our level to a level sequencer or cinematic. Um, we can add specific audio to this as well. So one thing I have is, um, let's see, uh, a screeching night music. So it's just low ominous tones, um, some wind instruments and um, string instruments playing, some low like a uh, horror kind of uh, music in the background. So I have that track and I'm going to go find my cinematic again. Alright, so there we go. Let's make sure we save our previous things that we did there. Uh, with that screeching night music. Um, I can do add track or I can just simply drag that music on. This is a sound cue. This is an audio wave. This is a sound cue. I can drag that sound cue in and that will add it uh, to my track. Now, if you don't have anything selected, then it's just going to add it underneath the camera cuts above the fade. So what that'll do is when I hit play, or let's, uh, yeah, let's look through the camera. And then we're going to hit play here. So it'll play the audio throughout the length of this audio, this uh, cinematic. So I kind of wanted a continuous kind of musical track behind everything. Um, and that way it will be easy to, to hear it and create more ambience and uh, or exaggerate the horror aspect of it. So something else I can do uh, is... Uh, to uh, add an object that's like falling um, or some other kind of animation in here. So let's get out of looking at this. Um, maybe this time I'll do a rock falling or something like that. So I have this environment set pack and underneath foliage, models. I should have some rocks. Oh, no, go back. Environment rocks. Maybe we'll do a rock falling down or something from whatever kind of. Uh, something in the scene, so let's do that. Let's find a rock. Um, maybe it is a big old rock, huge rock that's going to fall down and jump scare the player or whatnot. Uh, let me turn off lit for a second so I can see it in an easier standpoint. Um, and maybe at the end of the level sequence, uh, as the camera goes and fades or looks at this bottom section, this rock's going to fall down pretty quickly. All right, uh, so I'm going to position this up here because I really don't want this to be visible uh, until I need it to be. Um, so uh, with my level sequence, let's open that up. And I have my rock in my world. If I, uh, well, actually, yeah, it's fine there. Um, if I take that object, and if I do plus symbol with the track, add SM Big Rock, it adds a different track down here for this. So really what I want it to do is, uh, let's look through my camera. After this kind of falls down there, it's going to quickly, this rock's going to fall and hit uh, the ground. So it's going to like a scare action or something like that. So right here, we're going to keyframe the transform for the rock. Big rock should be selected. And then a couple of frames later, we're gonna have to adjust the timing later. Let's get out so we can see it. Uh, we're gonna slam the rock down on the ground. So it's gonna hit. And we'll click the keyframe there. Uh, if I hold down control and use a scroll wheel, that'll also zoom in and out. So I want it to kind of bounce a little bit. So we'll do a quick little bounce. 
It's a big old heavy rock, so I don't want it to bounce too high. And I want it to go back to the ground pretty quickly there. All right. Uh, let's uh, let's look at our camera mode and let's go ahead and play. Or let's go back to the beginning. Probably not all the way to back to the very beginning, but I do need to see the rock. So we'll go back here. There we go. So that's not too bad. You can see the rock coming in. Uh, maybe the fall could be a little faster, so I can just move them closer together. And maybe the bounces could be closer together. So I'm just taking a keyframe, uh, dragging them, and moving them left or right. So that changes the timing of that keyframe. Well, actually, let's go back into our sequencer and play it here. Lost where it is. There it is. All right. All right, so let's go back, uh, look through our camera, and hit spacebar. There you go, it looks pretty good. The bounce is probably a little bit, a little bit too rubbery, but we at least get the point of view there. All right, so we have a rock moving, animating uh, in our sequencer. Uh, we might as well add some audio to this as well. So I have some other audio files of, uh, this is really just footsteps, but I've just repurposed them as, uh, like a tree falling, so that's what I use in the other file. I use this as the same example for this rock hitting the ground. So we'll use that one for the rock hitting the ground. And I have sound cues as well. It makes it sound uh, deeper. There's a modulator on there. Uh, so what I'm going to do this time is with the SM Big Rock track of my sequencer, I'm going to drag this sound cue. And what that'll do is add that sound file to right on top of or with that Big Rock um, object. So as this hits the ground, I want it to kind of play that sound there. So let's back it up. Hit spacebar. It's not the right perfect sound for this, but it gets the picture. It gets the idea that hey, something's hitting the ground. If we're having a big heavy object that's hitting the ground, uh, then we want it to make a sound. So I can actually cut how long of an audio it happens as well. Uh, so I'm going to cut that a little bit as far as drag it to the lower left. And let's find, there we go, that's, you know, maybe this one, a little faster. So basically you want it to hit, uh, we'll try We'll try this this one, yeah, which is, uh, I just lowered the tone on it. Uh, and I'm going to drag that one in there as well. And so now I have two audio clips. Uh, I might need to move it back. And let's um, let's cut it off a little bit on the left side. And drag it so when it hits the ground, it will make a second sound. So let's drag it back some and hit spacebar. There we go. So it looks like it hits the ground. Now that's not the right perfect sound for this, but to get the picture to show you what our goal is, um, we can add sound. So I really have two different sound clips and I've kind of wedged them next to one another. There you go. To add sound to subtle, subtle areas, a specific areas instead of a sound playing in the background the whole time. All right, so the, the last thing uh, that I've done is just add a post processing volume to this as well. Uh, and my post processing volume is already in my level. Um, so there it is in the level. But I want to be able to change the exposure. So if I click on post processing volume, let me move this out of the way. Make sure nothing else is selected there. And the post-processing volume, uh, I'm not sure if it'll show you, yeah, it will, uh, from that add plus track. You can do add post-processing volume. So it adds that uh, as a track as well. Uh, but I need to look at some of the parameters that this post-processing volume has. I just want to adjust the exposure. So with post-processing volume, there's a plus track symbol. And um, let's see, settings. Uh, yeah, everybody can see that. Um, exposure. I think it's an exposure compensation. So that's what I want there. So exposure, exposure compensation. So what that can allow me to do is over time, let's maximize my viewport here. Um, I want it to like increase the exposure so that in the cinematic it's a little brighter, a little easier to see. Uh, I'm actually going to do it like right here, starting here, so you can see the difference. Maybe a little later as it's already out of the fade. 
Um, so let's do keyframe here, which is 0.5 is what my default value is. And quickly we will increase that to something really drastic, like three. Um, so let's save. And I'm just gonna hit play so we can see it. So it's gonna start with low exposure. The exposure is going to increase to three over that time so I can see more of the world. There you can see the exposure a little easier now. So over time I can overexpose or underexpose um, the the exposure that's happening uh, within my scene. So any other post processing effects, we just would click the plus track, go find the setting attribute, depth of field or whatever it is, and then drive that action within the level sequencer as well. All right, so uh, what I did differently, uh, let me go find, let's turn off unlit for a second. Uh, go find the level cinematic. I'm gonna turn off autoplay. And instead, um, what I really needed to do is keep uh, a tree laid on the ground um, after it fell down, because I wanted to block the character. Um, if I have some motion of a tree falling, it's not going to block the character. Um, uh, after the cinematic is over with, it makes that object disappear again. Um, so if I do open level blueprint, uh, what I've done here is uh, created an event, event begin play, and then from that I connected it to a create level sequence player. Then I selected my level sequence that I wanted to play. From that I dragged out and chose a play level sequence. That should sync it up to uh, the target. If it doesn't, you might need to drag the out target or out actor to the target and then the target to or sequence player to the play. And the other thing I've done here is just say, uh, well, I'll turn on the visibility of a tree that's already laid down in the same position as the, the one that was shown in the level sequence. I added a 34 second delay because that's how long this level sequence is. It's 34 seconds to play the level sequence after that's done toggle the visibility on for this tree. So let's compile that again. We'll close this. Uh, we will go back to lit mode and I'm gonna hit play and we'll look at this level sequence one more time. Um, and then um, that'll be it for this video. So let's actually open up this level sequence. Um, the only things that I've done, I've done differently is that I have three camera cuts. So if I move this down and play it, I have one camera, two cameras and three cameras. Okay. Also, it's, I'm doing fade to black, so I have a fade track. There's the same audio track that I use with the other one. Um, here is my three different camera tracks. Each one of them has keyframes for the motion. Here's that uh, tree that's going to fall. Uh, so as it gets to this point, this tree is going to rotate and fall down. Then the camera is going to focus on it. Uh, within that tree falling, I also have uh, three different audio cues, kind of like a cutting the tree audio track, and then two falling tree audio tracks there. Then I have my post-processing uh, effect that's going on uh, that is changing the uh, contrast or exposure compensation over time. Right. So that's a, a easy way to set up a cinematic uh, through level sequencer, creating cameras. So we'll end this again by watching the level sequence. Uh, I have it set up to begin, event begin play. So the, when I hit the play button, it's going to play that level sequence first. Um, the lighting says it needs to be rebuilt from that um, the rock that I put in there. Uh, so that reminds me one thing to, to remember if you're doing animation and you don't want to have to build the lighting because the lighting should change here. Uh, this big rock is animated, so we need to change the mobility to movable. That's pretty important. When I change an object to movable, the lighting needs to be rebuilt, turns off, because it, the lighting will be processed for this object on the fly. It'll be dynamic lighting. So I've done that with my tree as well. All right, so to wrap up this video, we'll watch the cinematic and go into play mode. We'll take a couple steps in play mode, and then I'll wrap it up.
now I'm back in play mode. Love seeing this is finished. Uh, there's the damn tree that I've duplicated and turned on with visibility. And now you can continue with the gameplay. Alright, so that'll wrap it up for this video. Thanks for watching.